Hello everyone, it's Charlie and Westeros here, and I am back with a new theory video at long last. It's uh, been a while, and I actually meant to make this video a couple of weeks ago. However, I've been crazy busy with school, my folks came into town to visit, uh, I've been sick, and uh, especially I've been having a lot of decision-making issues when it came to this specific video. Well, I'm here now and I was going to discuss my thoughts on the fate of Daenerys Targaryen, but after spending so much time thinking on her, um, I've come to realize I'm still very, very undecided about the fate that awaits her. Um, and as you will see from this video, I think I have much more cohesive thoughts in terms of discussing the fate of Aegon, aka Young Griff, uh, in the series of Song of Ice and Fire slash the TV show Game of Thrones. However, before I uh, continue onwards, I need to remind you guys that this video does contain spoilers. Um, if you have not read the books, and I would even include the short novella The Princess and the Queen by George R. R. Martin in that, um, and if you do not want anything spelled for you, then I strongly suggest you move away from this video right now. Alright, back to the topic at hand. Now, I was going to focus on the fate of House Targaryen as a whole, but to be perfectly honest, um, at this point I feel like that it, like it's really only, it really only focuses on Daenerys Targaryen herself, if you think about it. Of course, there are a lot of other suspected Targaryens in the series, including Jon Snow as the theorized son of Rhaegar and Lyanna, as well as um, Rhaegar's son Aegon Targaryen, who supposedly, who supposedly didn't die uh, according to the most recent book. Now, I will not get into the whole Jon Snow scenario in the video since that probably merits a video in of itself, but I will discuss Young Griff, uh, aka Aegon, in relation to the fate of Daenerys, so I will start with him. Now, a lot of people do not think that this Aegon figure is truly the same one who was Elia and Rhaegar's son, and uh, many think to him to be an imposter, actually. Uh, in short, I agree with these thoughts. Uh, he is not a legitimate Targaryen in the same way that Daenerys is. I do, however, believe him to be a Blackfire descendant. Now, here's why. John Connington, as fake Aegon's adoptive guardian, works for the Golden Company, a band of mercenaries created by the Targaryen bastard Aegon Rivers for his Blackfire nephews after they lost the civil war against the Targaryens that we know well over a century ago. These mercenaries were evidently created with the intention to fight for the Blackfires, and this can be demonstrated uh, by the fact that they consistently try to return to Westeros uh, to claim the Iron Throne until the supposedly last male descendant of House Blackfire was killed. Um, however, it is still possible, it's actually very possible, that there were female Blackfires who had descendants, and as a result, I am strongly convinced that Aegon is a Blackfire descendant. The Golden Company fought for the Blackfires, and unless John Connington had enough money to pay for their support, which I highly doubt since most exiled knights don't even have, have any semblance of wealth in order to maintain this kind of a mercenary group, so I think he would at least very, he would at the very least need to support an already existent Blackfire to be a credible uh, ally, and I somehow doubt he would be able to introduce even an imposter Blackfire and have the Gold Company believe him at the drop of a dime, although I guess it is a possibility. My thought is that Connington and Miles Toyne, aka Blackheart, the uh, previous leader of the Golden Company, made the decision to play off the Blackfire descendant as Young Griff uh, a as fake Aegon, in association with, of course, Varys as Rhaegar's son. Um, in order to claim the throne and at this point unite the realm with Daenerys. Given that by the end of Book 5, Westeros is in turmoil, I think they picked the perfect time to strike, of course. Now, even though he is a Blackfire, and I do think he is the Mummer's Dragon of Qua in Kaith's, Quaith, Kaith's warning, um, the Mummer being, I think, Connington, since he was playing the role of Old Griff, and of course, Mummers are like actors or entertainers. Um, he's playing that role for a long time. Fake Aegon, nevertheless, is still a dragon. What this means is he will, in fact, be able to ride a dragon. Remember what happens in The Prince and the Queen? Uh, when Rhaenyra Targaryen wanted to claim the throne for, from her half-brother, 
She went and sought out illegitimate descendants of the Targaryens on Dragonstone to ride those dragons that didn't have any riders. Um, a few of these illegitimate Targaryen descendants, or dragon seed as they're known, were successful and could indeed ride dragons, as we read from that short novella. However, the Princess and the Queen also gives us a very strong clue as to what happens when those who can ride dragons suddenly realize their capability. In the best case, they, um, well, they either disappear, <laughs> like that young uh, girl did in that story, or they use it to live decadent uh, and self-enriched lifestyles, I guess. But in the worst cases, they try to take the throne for themselves. Caith said to Daenerys, do not trust the Mummer's dragon, aka, do not trust, the, do not trust this fake Aegon. That is, that is a clear indication that Aegon, however it goes down, will try to push his claim over Daenerys, and he will become an enemy to her. Remember, he is a male, well, according to um, what they're trying to put forward, he's a male descendant of Rhaegar, making him ahead in terms of succession before Daenerys, or ahead of Daenerys. So, that will definitely cause problems if he, if he seeks to assert that claim. So he will become enemies to her, even though it does not seem to be the case at the present. For a time, he will be able to, I think, co-opt her in, I guess, an alliance, to the point where I do think she will allow him to try and ride one of her dragons, and I think he will be successful at that. Um, do you all remember the three betrayals Danny learned of in the House of the Undying? Uh, the last betrayal was one of love, and this betrayal can really, I don't think, come from any other person or creature than, a, than an actual dragon, one of her own dragons, that Daenerys, you know, nurtured and raised as, and loved as a mother, of course. But I think this dragon will suddenly become subservient to the fake Aegon, and thereby betraying her love for the love, or I guess attachment, to another person, aka Aegon. I'm not sure if it's going to be uh, Rhaegal or Viserion, but I do strongly believe that one of these two dragons, I guess, quote, betraying her will be that love betrayal. Now, what awaits the fate of this fake Aegon? The fate that awaits all those who sought to use a dragon to take over the realm without a proper right is the same fate that awaits him. Just like what happened to Hugh the Hammer who betrayed Rhaenyra, he was killed. And equally, just like his Blackfire ancestors, and just like those dragon seeds who rode dragons and sought power during the Dance of the Dragons, Fake Aegon will fight, will fail, well he'll fight, and he will fail, and will die, as will, I suspect, the dragon who betrayed Daenerys. Now for Daenerys herself, I, um, there's no really any other way to go about this topic, but I will say I struggled a lot over how to approach and discuss her fate. My conclusions are, well, I don't really have that many conclusions to be honest. You know, so many people think that she is doomed to perish before the end of the series, and to be honest, there are many times when I think that this is what is going to happen to her as well. However, as far as I stand, and I think I am shocked myself by saying this, and I think many other people will be um, surprised or shocked as well, but I do not think that she will die before the absolute climax of the series. Um, a fellow YouTuber, Maester Payne, reminded me the other day that the series is called A Song of Ice and Fire for a reason. And without trying to sound too cliche, it is pretty obvious that Jon Snow and Daenerys are two crucial halves of this symbol. I won't get into the Jon Snow side of things since this video is not about him, once again, but I will say that considering Daenerys at this point plays such a symbolically large role in the story, there is no way, there's no way that she can be killed well, killed off anyway before the you know the climactic part of the series. It just doesn't make sense to me, I guess. I know there are quite a few theories out there that propose that Jon Snow is going to I guess fill the role of Azor High and Danny is going to be like his wife, and he's going to stab her with the blade with his blade to bring forth Lightbringer, just like in the prophecy. But to be perfectly honest, I I feel like that would really be too cliche if the story went that route. At least that's just my thought anyway. Um, so I really hope that they won't go. I guess, verbatim that direction. Um, even if they do, I really have trouble buying into the whole Danny marrying Jon Snow scenario to, you know, unite the kingdoms. Uh, a better candidate I would feel would be maybe 
look as as the wife of Azora, I would be maybe Egret or at least her corpse if it's still out there anyway, whatever you know has become of it. And if they do follow through with the Lightbringer, Azora High prophecy that she would fill that role since she's already dead as well, and especially since you know she is said to be kissed by fire. But that aside, George R. R. Martin certainly likes to surprise the reader, I think. And at this point, Daenerys being killed off just seems. It almost seems too predictable or almost an assumed occurrence at this point, so I feel that um, that that not killing her would almost be coming as more of a surprise to many readers, because that's just my opinion. You know, Danny Al and also Danny almost ha guaranteed has a role to play in the final battle with the White Walkers, I feel. So I really have trouble accepting her demise before that event. Uh, anything after that, if it deals if it is it, well, if it is dealt with in the series, I can, I guess, more easily except in terms of her meeting her end, but uh, before then, I not so much, I can't. Well, it goes without saying that I am still very undecided about certain aspects of Daenerys Targaryen's fate. Uh, you know, there is a lot I haven't made up my mind about with regards to her role, and I know for a fact many people will probably disagree with my thoughts in this video, but that's why I want to hear what you guys have to say. Um, what do you honestly think is going to happen to her? Is her fate sealed within the story? Does she still have a huge role to play at the climactic final battle? Tell me what you think. I really want to hear what all of you think in terms of Daenerys Targaryen's fate. Because clearly, my thoughts aren't complete in that respect. Even though I do think she will survive. Um, I guess that's all for now. Uh, I wish I had more to say on that. Um, this video kind of turned into more of a Aegon or fake Aegon video, but, you know, they're both, I guess, Valyrians or Targaryens, if you will, so I guess I'll subsume them in their, under one category for the sake of, I guess, simplicity, so. Yeah, that's all for now. Um, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe, like it, please. Even if you didn't like it, at least give me a response as to why, or what I can do better next time. Um, April 6th is the premiere of Game of Thrones, so I will be making my video reviews then. I have a few more videos coming up soon. Um, my fellow YouTuber friend, Maester Payne, has asked me to post one of his theories in a video. And it's actually a really interesting theory, so I accepted the daunting task. And uh, I will share with that share that video soon. I have another video coming up shortly, so yeah, stay tuned. And I think that's all for now, so thanks again. Take care, guys.